So you're getting ready to hire a general contractor or a building contractor for your project. That's pretty exciting times, isn't it? You're going to get ready to have dreams come true. You want to make sure that everything is laid out perfect. And so when the people show up, contractors show up on a job, you know what needs to be done. They know what needs to be done. And everybody knows how it's going to be done. Believe me. The contractors, does, they don't want this to be a problem. They want to flow right on through this. If they're good contractors, they got tons of work in behind you. And what they need to do is get you in and done and happy so you be a referral. So now we kind of already talked about in some of our other videos about the beginning of the project. Uh, and so go back and check them out if you haven't seen them already. But we're getting ready to hire a contractor. Now there's a large wide range of different types of building contractors. So we're going to start off uh, with a general contractor. A general contractor, he is normally used on bigger projects, projects that actually bring in multiple skilled contractors. And uh, he organizes it, he takes care of it, he schedules it all. Uh, with all the different, we call them subcontractors or specialty contractors. And he takes care of all that. Of course, he is rewarded for this. Uh, you know, you pay him for this. But if you're being your own general contractor, you're the going to be the one doing this. But now we also get into smaller projects. So uh, we talk about, uh, you know, say I got a, 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 say a little, even if it's a little project, say like I got to get a, a, a new toilet or a new vanity. Well, now you don't really need a, built, a general contractor for this, especially if it's a permits involved. Specialty contractors are a lot of times, not always, associated with the permits that they have to draw. But so you got a toilet you got to replace. Well, that's a quickie, you know, that don't take a whole lot, but you really kind of need to know a little bit of investigating what uh, what contractor does that? Well, your first thing you're going to think, well, okay, a toilet is a plumbing contractor. Okay, now I'm putting in a vanity and a sink and, uh, and new faucets. Well, now I got two contractors possibly. Maybe your plumbing contractor has the ability to put the vanity in. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe, but uh, the carpenter, if you have to hire a carpenter to put it in, see, that's a different type of a contractor, a specialty contractor. Uh, then he maybe have to install it while the uh, plumber comes in and does the plumbing. So each one of these have different specialty trades. So you don't need a GC for a little jobs, but you just need to know which specialty trades are involved. Then you also need to know what specialty trades do need to have licenses. Now, licenses and specialty trades are not like a general contractor's license. They literally, a general contractor doesn't have to know all the building codes as like a plumber or electrician, but they have to know enough of it that they know what good, you know, what they're getting the job done right or not. That's why they need to be taught building codes as far as our plumbers, electricians, HVAC, mechanical engineers, etc. Drywall hangers, you know, they're great, fabulous. I love them and I respect them, but there's no, there's really not much there. Sometimes some municipalities have screw off codes, but you know where they put how many screws to a sheet or some. But you want to make sure you get the right trade to the right job. Okay, I'm glad I said drywall. Perfect example. So in the union world in the Midwest, we have two different specialty trades. You think really for drywall? Yes. So you have one trade that hangs the drywall. In our region, it's the carpenters uh, that actually do the drywall hanging. And then the next trade would be your sheet, uh, uh, would be your drywall, uh, well, drywall unions, painters unions, plasters union, you know, whatever municipality or areas that you're in, you're in, they take care of the balance. Now, that does it. Now, if there's no codes involved, uh, and even if there is codes, it's just like in that there, it's just simple things like the screwing it off. But that, but you want to know who do I got to get and do there's codes involved. Can you do both? Ask the questions. Now, like I say, I'm a general contractor and I'd be happy to do it for you. But you know, if I got to take some time to get everything scheduled and I got to go look and I got to make sure it's done right and I got to check the job and I, then I'm going to be paid for that. Well, you don't need to pay for all of that, especially if it's something simple. How do we find contractors. Best ones normally always word of mouth. 
you know, my brother had a, a kitchen put in, and I just love this guy. Uh, he just had great luck with him. Or uh, my friend just had a deck built, or I just had some painting done, and this painter is just fabulous, and my friend just, just raves about him. Okay, that's really, truly the best. But sometimes, sometimes what happens is, is that a particular contractor, he may be going through things in life that, you know, that everything was going great when he was painting your buddy's house, uh, but now he's maybe going to health issues or, or things happening, you know, at home or things like that is distracting him. Uh, maybe, or uh, who knows, maybe, you know, it happens. Maybe he got into drugs and alcohol since then. Uh, but don't expect that to be an absolute guarantee, but it's probably the best one. The second one is, is I would go to the Better Business Bureau and see about any of theirs, uh, contacts or referrals. You're going to go back to the Better Business Bureau anyway at the very end, whoever you pick, and just see, you know, and see what's happening with that, you know, with, with them if they've had any complaints or whatnot. But Better Business Bureau will also give you referrals of people that are registered in their uh, system. So that's another great way. Same drawbacks as be the other, but that's a drawback can be with all of them. Another great way of finding a great contractor that's called I Know a Guy Gal. And these are people that literally, uh, and it, it's, it's all over the United States now. Great system of just people referring. So say, hey, and I've, I've used this. I need a drywall hanger. Well, I put it out there and uh, people were saying, hey, call this guy, call this guy, yeah, yeah, and then they give referrals. And, and also, what's great about that is I guarantee you, them are just people that word of mouth, that they'll come out there, if they've done bad, there'll so be people on that uh, and tell you, hey, don't go there. They might have done Joe a great job, but when they came to do mine, they was horrible. Oh, uh, okay, you know, so that's a great source. Another great source is uh, home. Home Advisor, I think, is still out there. Uh, Angie's List, actually, they become one. They're a source of it, and they uh, there's a whole bunch of them like that uh, out there that you can look into. House is one of them. They're, they're just get, just you can just check it out there on my book and go through it, and you'll see. But there's a whole bunch of them out there that you can learn from. But that's another great way of getting it. Now they actually a lot of those systems like Angie's List and stuff, they have already done a lot of their research. They make sure that there's not a criminal record involved, that they haven't been to jail or, you know, or they're not, you know, or maybe they've got a DWI and they can't come to work because they're not legally driving. You know, they could take care of all that. They'll make sure they've already done a lot of that work. The problem with them are uh, that using them types of media uh, marketing uh, outlets is that they'll blast you. You're going to get tons of people call you. And, uh, you know, and you don't want tons of people uh, calling you. So we kind of know our specialty. Now we kind of know where some different places we can go get some referrals at. Them are some fabulous ways now. And we go to, now we go to the Better Business Bureau. We go to Better Business Bureau and we check them out and see how they, you know, see if everything goes with them. Uh, that if there's been any issues with them. CaseNet. Uh, that's another one that you could go to. Uh, they'll find out about any criminal records or anything. That's another fabulous way of checking it out uh, and making sure you're getting good contractors. So these are some of the things you want to make sure, because it's just that important. We want to make sure type of contractor. We want to make sure where we can get one at. We're going to make sure that they've been dependable and they've got a good track record. These are some of the things that you need to be looking for. 40 plus years of my experience seeing how this works. I'm so excited. I can, I, I just want to scream at the top of the mountaintops just how much this could help you and save you. We all heard the horror stories. Don't be one of them. Thanks, folks.